Welcome to Ling270, Language, Technology, and Society. This course is offered through the Department of Linguistics at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'd like to begin by describing the goals for this lecture. Herein, we will be presenting the major course objectives, providing brief definitions of the major terms, language, technology, and society. I will introduce examples of language technology, both historical and contemporary. And I want to get you thinking about the interactions between language, technology, and society. Finally, we're going to discuss the prerequisites required for you to be enrolled in this course. There are a number of major course objectives that you are expected to learn by the end of this course. By the end of this course, you will understand the intersections of language, technology, and society. You will have developed a broader understanding of writing systems. You will have learned the historical impact of language technologies. And you will have gained a high-level understanding of the current state of the art in natural language processing and artificial intelligence. Finally, you will understand the history and the impact of the internet. I want you to begin by thinking about some of the definitions of the major terms that we'll be using in this course. We need to define the terms language, technology, and society, and then we need to think about how these various topics will intersect with each other. How do language and technology intersect? What is the role that language plays in society? And how does technology affect society? I want you to take a moment now and pause the video and write out your own definitions of the terms language, technology, and society. This doesn't need to be terribly complicated, but a sentence or two for each. I want you to get started by thinking about what your current understanding is of each of these terms. After you've done that, I want you to do the same thing for the three questions below. How do language and technology intersect? How do languages and society intersect? And what is the role of technology within society? For each of those questions, write down two or three sentences about what your current understanding is. You won't be turning this in, but this is going to be one of the techniques that we'll be using to help you learn and internalize the terms and thought processes as we go along. Now that you've done that, let's move on. We'll come back to these definitions in the following slides, and then I'm going to ask you to come back and compare what you wrote with what we have here, the definitions that we'll be using in this class. Language is something that we use every day. We've used it since we were infants, but what is language? Language is not the only form of communication. There are many ways of communicating and many species that take part in communication. But language is a special kind of communication system. Language is a communication system which allows the user to combine a finite number of symbols into a virtually infinite amount of messages. Now, over the course of the next few weeks, we'll look in a lot more detail about what those individual terms mean. What do we mean by symbols? And how do those symbols combine in a way 
that provides us with, as I said, a virtually infinite combination of ways of communicating. Language is also natural. We acquire our first language without being explicitly instructed in that language. For those of you who have studied a foreign language, you'll note that this is a very different process from the way in which languages after our first language tend to be taught in formal instructional settings. So the language that we learn as an infant is our first language, and that's a natural language. Other languages that we learn later in life are also natural languages, but language could also be artificial. One form of artificial language could be a computer programming language. Another form of artificial language is a constrained language, like simplified English, some sort of artificially standardized human language. There are differing opinions, but generally, language is typically considered to be a uniquely human ability, something that humans possess and that other creatures, while they communicate, do not communicate in a way that is typically construed to be language. So what about technology? Well, we're going to define technology as something pertaining to tools or objects that are created by humans to augment abilities. The use of tools in this particular way, especially complex tools, is also generally considered to be a uniquely human ability. There are other creatures that use tools, but none to the extent and of complexity that humans use tools. In this course, we will be looking at some aspects of technology, in particular, those aspects of technology that are directly related to language and the way in which language can be expressed using technology. We'll cover a broad range of topics in technology as it relates to language. We'll begin with some very simple technology, a stylus applied to clay. And over the course of this semester, we will expand through the written word on paper and other media to the use of computers and other technological, technological tools that are currently used. This class will also examine society. When we talk about society, we're talking about the organization of human relations. That is, how groups of people understand themselves, how they interact with each other in terms of economics, politics, and culture. Humans are not the only social animals. Many others are Many other animals are also social creatures. However, it is often considered that human society may in fact be more complex than the, than the societies, the social interactions of other creatures. When we talk about language technologies, there's a broad range of technologies that we might be applying. In general, we'll be looking at writing systems, so mechanisms and techniques for taking the, the spoken word, which is an auditory media, and constructing tools and techniques for writing those, those thoughts those sentences down. This goes from clay and stylus through pen and paper, through the printing press, and then to other forms of technology that allow language to be transmitted over a distance, beginning with the telegraph, the telephone, 
and today the internet. We'll also look at a broad range of natural language processing techniques. That is, technologies generally on the computer through which language is manipulated, recognized, or synthesized. We'll look at technologies that apply to speech, including speech synthesis and speech recognition, as well as technologies that apply to text, including machine translation and many others. Language interacts with society and society interacts with language. Language could not exist without society. And society would have a very hard time existing without language. Language and the fact that humans are capable of language has allowed the development of a broad and rich range of cultures and civilizations across history. Throughout history, language technologies have been influenced by societal changes, and society develops as a result of the language technologies that it uses. Technology and society also interact. Technology affects and augments human behavior, and as it does so, it can transform relations between people. Technological developments change the occupations that are available to people, and as this very course shows, the ways in which humans interact with each other using language. Right now, in this course, we are interacting with each other over a broad range of physical spaces. You and I are not in the same physical space, and yet we're making use of technologies right now in a way that we're able to relate to each other using language. Technology is usually developed to meet a social need, and again, the present circumstances are an excellent example of this. The technologies that we're using, video, and audio communication over internet platforms are addressing the societal need that we have at this current moment. Finally, I'd like to point out that the prerequisite for this class is LING 100, Introduction to Language Science. You must have taken LING 100 in order to register for this class. If you have not taken LING 100, it is possible to continue in this class if you have sufficient requisite background in linguistics. To do so, you will have to apply to me directly and get instructor consent. Please do so right away. If you have not taken LING 100, you need to contact me during the first week of class to obtain instructor consent. The reason that this is a prerequisite is that over the course of this semester, we will be covering a number of concepts that I will assume you have been previously exposed to. This is a 200 level class, so in general, when we come across these topics, we will discuss them and we will define them again. But I do assume and require that this is not your first introduction to these concepts. Three of the major concepts that you need to have been exposed to before and that you will have been exposed to in Ling 100 are phonology, syntax, and semantics. Phonology is the branch of linguistics that looks at the most basic units of language, the sounds or other phonological units of language. So language is composed of a set of units. In spoken language, this set of units 
is the set of basic sounds that comprise the language. In signed languages, that set of units are the hand shapes and basic hand movements that comprise the language. The sounds or other phonological units of language are associated with meaning, and semantics is the branch of linguistics that deals with meaning and the assignment of meaning. Different languages map sounds to meanings in different and essentially arbitrary ways. Syntax tells us about the process that language uses to combine phonemes into morphemes, and then more importantly, morphemes and words into utterances. So syntax looks at the construction of morphemes and words into utterances in a way that provides a virtually infinite set of outputs. Thank you for making it to the end of this first introductory video. At this point, I'd like you to, to go back to the definitions that you wrote down during when I asked you to pause and write and revisit them in the context of the slides that we just went over. The slides are available to you, and I'd like you to spend five or ten minutes going back and looking to see how did your definitions match up with the definitions that I've presented in these slides? What did you get right? What did I present that you weren't expecting? I'll see you in the next video, and we have a lot to look forward to over the course of this semester.